The last part I would like to discuss about stores is creating a custom store. Over the past few videos, we learned that a writable store object contains three methods. Subscribe, update and set. Now as long as the subscribe method is implemented, an object becomes a store. Beyond that, you can add any logic you want to, which makes it really easy and straightforward to create our own custom stores. In this video, let's see how to create a custom count store. In stores.js, let's begin by defining a new function. Function create count and within this function, let's call the writable function to create a store. Let's pass in zero as the initial value. We know that writable returns an object with three methods. Let's destructure them. So const subscribe set and update is equal to writable. But we won't be returning these properties. Instead, we will return a new object. This object will return the subscribe method as it is. So the object is already a valid store. But now we can extend this object with our own functionality. We can add an increment property, which is a method. It will accept an argument size with a default value of one and it will call the update function updating the store value by step size. Similarly, we can add a decrement property which decrements the store value by the step size. So decrement size is equal to one and n is equal to n minus size. Finally, we can also add a reset property which calls the set method passing in zero. Now, we can call this create count function, assign it to a constant called custom count, and then export it for use in other components. In display.svelte, we can import custom count, which is our custom store. In the markup, we can render its value using the dollar prefix. The custom count is dollar custom count. We can also add buttons to increment, decrement and reset the count value. So button, the text is going to be increment and on click of this button, we're going to call custom count dot increment. I'm going to make a copy of this, change the text to increment five and pass in five as the step size. Similarly, I can make copy of these, paste it and change increment to decrement. And for our last button, we can add the reset count functionality. Button text is going to be reset and on click custom count dot reset. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have the custom count as zero and the various buttons. The first five buttons correspond to the buttons that we have just added. If I click on increment, the count value increments, increment by five, decrement, decrement by five, and of course, reset. Our custom count store is working as expected. So what we have done with our custom store is expose new methods like increment, decrement and reset, but hide the update and set methods. This way you can pretty much have any functionality with your custom store. So when dealing with global state management in Svelte, remember about stores as they let you deal with all the complexities in a really simple way. All right. With that, we come to the end of all the major concepts I wanted to cover in this Svelte series. 
We have covered creating a Svelte project from the template repo, how to bind text, HTML and attributes, how to conditionally render elements, how to render a list of elements and the importance of specifying a unique key. We've also learned about event handling, form handling, reactive declarations and statements. We then proceeded with the component architecture, props, context API, custom events, slots, lifecycle hooks, making HTTP requests, dynamic components, the module context, and finally stores. I hope you now have a pretty good understanding about Svelte. Apart from what we have covered, there are a few more features that I haven't covered, but Svelte does support. There are topics related to motion, animations, and transitions. These topics are very specific to an application and it's definitely a nice to have rather than a necessity, which is why I would like you guys to explore it based on your project requirements. Also, do let me know in the comment section if you would be interested in a series on Svelte Kit, which is the logical next step after learning Svelte. But this is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this Svelte series. If you have enjoyed the series, please do consider subscribing to the channel and sharing the playlist with your friends and colleagues. As always, thank you guys for watching and until next time, take care.